All right. Okay. So it's it's on now. Cool. We're just gonna do this. Okay. Just gonna wing it. Mm-hmm. Lord knows what's gonna happen. All right. All right. But uh, fuck okay. it. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Start the Beat, the show where we highlight the past, present, and future of the Pittsburgh music scene and beyond. My name is Brian Sykes Howe. I am your host, and today I am joined by the one and only, the somewhat elusive, a phantom in the night, my good friend of many, many years, a lot of years, everybody, make some noise, the one and only, Jason Cantu's in the building. Thank you for having me. It's really good to see you, homie. It's been quite a while. It has, man. Thank you for the invite. It's been a long time coming. I know. This is funny. You know, I think that there's like a small, small list of people that, you know, since I've started this show, which was back in 2014, that I was like, you know, obviously I need to have them on the show. And like, you're one of those people and we just never did it. No, it was always like, yeah, man, if you ever need someone that's a backup, like call me, but you never needed a backup. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) And I think you still don't, you still don't need a backup, but it's like, let's just make time for it. I think that what happened, um, is the fact that like we worked at the same job Mm -hmm. for so many years together Yeah, that like we see each other every day and we're chatting and it's this kind of like, you know, the people that are like always like close to are the people that I always like think about last sure. for the show you yeah, know it's absolutely. like not even like a it's just what it is it's yeah like, you know i see this motherfucker every day yeah well yeah i already know everything about him <laughs> what, you, know, <laughs> you need like a break or something you know yeah. or, or for them to not be at the same place you know and to not see them every day totally yeah. but uh you know now we you know we're in a position where both of us have been removed mm-hmm. from that place for several years now yeah and i haven't seen you in a while yeah man i mean you've been incredibly busy I, i've always been astonished and, and admire not only your work ethic but like your scheduling i don't you know i always ask you like how do you do so much and you're like google calendars man this and this i'm like <laughs> i'm like i don't even know how to work the calendar man i don't know how to do it totally uh, totally i mean like a lot of like really really not good decisions <laughs> like i mean i told you i drove from uh, Cincinnati, Cincinnati last night. Oh. My my show was. I ended at one a.m. Wow! I got on the road by one thirty. One, no thanks. Yeah, oh, I mean, sometimes it's like, oh, do I really want to wake up in Cincinnati? I don't think anyone does. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, I mean, that's the thing. Is it's like it's a lot of shit like that. Mm-hmm. Just like hard decisions, and I don't know. As I get older, it's not getting. It's really not getting any it, easier. It definitely gets harder. I can't. I can't. It's like I'm definitely not. 22 anymore no you know and in my 20s i never wanted to be home at all i would look for any excuse just to be outside i think in, in my 20s i was living in Southside pittsburgh so as you know it's just nothing but bars yeah so i had my money through friday routine like which bars i would hit i always hit the same two or three every day you know that's just how the 20s were and that's why i don't remember anything from my 20s <laughs> you know best <laughs> times i'll never remember uh, but but it's like you know you said you're going to cedar point tonight later on today it's like oh, oh yeah man totally keep well, it rolling dude we're we're driving up tonight we're gonna stay up there and then we'll wake up in the morning and go to the park oh, cool I still never been to Cedar Point, man, and I love coasters, and I live uh, vicariously through you as you're, <laughs> you've seen. I'm going through your, your uh, adventures, you know, your your theme park adventures. Uh, I see them on Instagram, dude, and Facebook, and it's 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 fun. You look like you're having so much fun, and I wish I could be there with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, you know, maybe one day we'll get a little Cedar Point trip. It's only three hours go. away. That's not bad. That's it's, not it's, bad. It's easy to get up there. Yeah, but yeah, I've been like trying to just like balance and squeeze in doing fun stuff, but also like working a ton, you know, that's the type of thing is it's like people online will see the like, oh, like I'm at the roller coaster or I'm at the show, but they're not seeing me, you know, falling asleep, (laughs) driving back, (laughs) you know, in between and all the, all the travel shit is rough. Yeah, that's rough, man. I'm like half awake now to be completely honest with you. You know, I, last night too, I, uh, you know, it was stayed up later than I should have and then uh, (laughs) got up earlier than I should have and, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, we're, we're here. We're doing it, man. Totally. I think that, you know, really what it boils down to, and I say this a lot to people when they're like, you know, how do you do stuff or how can I do stuff? It's just like, if you really want to do something, you're going to do it. Your your mind will make a way mm-hmm. for it to happen mm-hmm. for sure. For sure. So Jason, yes, uh, you know, this is a show about 
the the past, present, and future of okay. the the Pittsburgh music scene, oh, as boy. I've talked about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you are somebody that has been on the inside and the outside oh, and yeah. the peripheral of the Pittsburgh music scene for pretty much as long as I have. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think we're probably the same age. We've mm-hmm. probably been doing this about the same yeah. time mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So I would say you're doing it before me for sure in, in Pittsburgh. I was a, I, I moved here. You you you've been you lived That's, here, right? right? Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, when, when I came here uh, to Pittsburgh, I can't name exactly what year but uh i remember seeing your shows i went I, you know i went to any show i could and i remember seeing you and i was like oh man that's awesome this guy's like my age and doing the stuff and that's what i want to do so i just like went to see what the local scene is is was about and you were the first ones and i, I saw and then followed and stayed following you know ever since so. it's funny yeah i remember you being like one of like the first like genuinely nice people that i met <laughs> Because like I, I hadn't even been playing shows that long mm-hmm. at the time. Okay. But you were just like a super friendly guy. Like, hey, what's up? Yeah. How's it going? It was, it was, um, it was like, I think it was like the, the Faded Fest guys. Oh, yeah. The Faded uh-huh. Entertainment guys. Uh-huh. And uh, we made f- friends with them too. And I even uh, was hanging out with them and, and helping them promote stuff. And then I even had a, a band at the time. And it was on a, on a Faded Fest that they put on at, at Matrix, Club Matrix. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and every room with its own little venue, its own little stage. Uh, I remember you were there with Enigma, um, Ryan. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He he was great too, man. Yeah, it was a. It was, those are like really fun times. Mm-hmm. I think that there was a point in my life where, you know, I was maybe jaded about all of that kind of stuff. I don't know. It's hard why. not to be. I mean, you it, know, like I I feel like, you know, like you, your early shows things may not go as well or maybe you get like burned by a promoter in a weird way and things Mm -hmm. like that. But like now looking back at it, it's like those were actually pretty cool compared to like what happened afterwards. Yeah. And also with hindsight, like knowing how much work it takes to put on events like that. It's a lot of work. I can understand it a little bit better. Absolutely. Yeah. I I think back then it, it, the problem was like just how things worked back then. It was like one of those like pay to play, sell tickets kind of thing, you know, that's just how it was. <laughs> yeah, know? totally. I mean, if you had a promoter, you know, and most promoters were like that, as opposed to DIY stuff, which we find out works way better because it's not pay to play or sell tickets, you know? I mean, it's, you know, is it, they both contain promotional, self promotion all the time. But, you know, uh, I think one uh, model's better than the other, you know? But that's just how it was, man. I don't know. Uh, and it's, it's fun to be jaded about it. I mean, it's, it should always be jaded, I think, you know, even yeah. nowadays. You know, and I so. think the thing too with like the the pay to play model, yeah, is that I, for some genres of music, I think it. I don't want to say that it makes more sense, mm-hmm. but I can understand it with like certain demographics versus other ones. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's I, I would say like maybe. Um, it's like if they have to have a following already, you know, maybe that would help. Or if they have a lot of support already, you know, maybe. So I remember um, seeing A Son of the Fallen at, uh, I think it was um, somewhere in, in Station Square. It might not not have been Matrix. It might have been like some other place next door to it or something like that. But I remember A Son of the Fallen playing and it was like their, all their families, and, you know, everyone's family and, and, and relatives were there and friends. And I was like, wow, like everyone's here for like this one band. And I was like, wow, what's it like to have like emotional and physical support from your friends and family? Like, <laughs> like, I've, I've never known that like ever, you know, I've had like zero support my whole entire life. I was like, wow, man, that's so cool. I just, I just never seen anything like that ever before. And I just like wanted to be a part of it, you know, ever since then, man. Totally. So, you know, you had mentioned that, you know, you were starting to play in some bands and do all that stuff. Um, we don't got to get into like the complete fucking, you know, full biography <laughs> of, you know, your time playing music in this scene. But, uh, you know, short version, how did you feel being a musician in Pittsburgh? Uh, I liked it a lot, man. I, I miss it. I, I really still want to do it. I mean, it, you know, it's like one of those things, like we said, it's like, you know, when you're it's just what I've always wanted to do my whole entire life since I was a little kid. You know, I just always wanted to perform and play in bands and make music. I think at some point I was like, well, I don't have to be in a band to make music, you know, and like, I don't have to perform to make stuff. I can just make stuff on my own and release it whenever. But, you know, I, I, it's, it's so much more fun with people and it's so much more fun to organize and put on shows and go to shows. And 
that's just oh, it's so good. I, I miss that, man. I, I definitely want to do it again. And I think I'm in a period right now where it's like, I'm, I really want to build a home studio. So I've just been buying instruments that I don't know how to use and technology <laughs> that I don't know how to use. You know, I, I never really, you know, had, had the, the money to buy things and, and like, or, or like I'm always, you know, even technology, I just bought my first laptop, like ever. I never had a computer like ever my whole entire life. So I'm like, what, what even is this? I mean, of course I use them for work, you know, but it's like, you have your routine and you know how to do certain things, but then, you know, when it's like, you can do whatever you want, it's like, okay, well, I, I get like option paralysis, you know, I'm like, there's, there's too many things to do and I don't know how to focus my attention on one thing. And I just end up just doing nothing, <laughs> you know, it's just easier to do nothing than something. But so I'm, I'm fine through that. It's like a personal problem, but you know, I, I did, did buy, um, you know, uh, MK three, uh, you know, um, native instruments, yeah. drum machine. That's fun. And then I bought, um, the, um, uh, 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 61 was it the, the keys okay uh, I was like not 49 but I know it's uh, it might be 60 I forget how many keys it is it's the, it's the one right before 88 yes so in between 49 and 88 whatever that is I forgot what it was but so it's been fun playing with those and I'm so bad at technology once again so I'm trying to figure out how to how to use both at the same time I can only get one or the other to work you know so I'm like ah, whatever man I'll look up some <laughs> tutorials later but I've been having fun just making stupid noises and stuff and now I'm looking around for like a guitar you know and so I'm like maybe I should um I mine up like either like an EGC electronic guitar company or like a, a Dunable Dunables are really cool and they have like a really nice affordable models now called like Dunable DE and they're like around like maybe a thousand something it's not so bad as opposed to like they're you know main line which are like three you know 3k i'm like ah, I, mean, I, I don't even know how to really play that much anymore it's like <laughs> let me just get like you know sl slide in there you know it's a uh, he's he's into it but yeah but I, I do miss playing man I, you know i i i originally started playing playing guitar as a kid you know and then uh played bass in a band and then um i just like those those deep heavy tones but i'm like let me get back into guitar man i miss that so yeah. So that's, that's what I think I'm going to work on this, this next year is just learn how to do stuff again, man. And once again, I'm sorry to talk for, for so long, but it's like, um, that's what I always want to do my whole entire life. Like as a kid, I remember my mom had this like Yamaha baby grand piano in the house. And I was like the only one who ever touched it. And I was like a little, like four year old, you know, five year old, just making up songs, just trying to like, play keys and stuff and not knowing how to play or read tablature. I didn't even know, like, musical notation existed, you know, I, I, I would make up songs. I'm like, I, I can't remember that. So like, how do I remember that? So I, I knew the alphabet. So I wrote like on a piece of paper, like A through Z from like <laughs> top to bottom. And then I like went from like high to low noises in my head, you know, and went from like, you know, A high, Z low. And so I'd make my own tablature on like how to like remember songs and how to write songs. So that's why I wrote songs as a kid is like, I made my own tablature. <laughs> I didn't know, you know, uh, it already existed, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, you know, so, but I, I just, I just, I just miss stuff. stuff so I'll, I'll get to it eventually, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's so <laughs> funny. And like, you know, it, it highlights just like a genuine sense of like curiosity and knowledge and just like being ambitious and just wanting to like put things out there. Yeah. You know? I, I've stayed away from, you know, the science of, of music for so long, you know, and, and I think it wasn't until like maybe a few months ago, I was like, all right, let me just try to learn music theory just a little bit. And, and I, I just always felt like it would ruin things for me, you know? And, and I know it, it's that's stupid to say because it's like no, here's the rules. You should follow the rules. But I always like, always just want to do my own thing. And if it didn't go with the rules, and like, oh well, like that's just me, you know. Like that's that's my mark on it. But now I'm like, maybe I should learn those things. It's like you know, it's its own science and language. And so I've been trying to study just simple like just piano music theory, you know. And then of course, you know, it translates to you know guitar, you know, it's just quite a different beast as well. So it's like, you know, um, it's, it's, it's been a little fun, adventurous thing for me, but it's like, yeah, I, I always, one of those people who just want to keep learning things, you know, no matter what. And, and it's, it's, it's so strange and funny because like, it, it's, it's a whole nostalgia thing too, for me. Um, I'm trying to think of like what, what used to make me happy as a kid, you know, as, as some reason, as you get older, I get like more nostalgia, uh, nostalgic. And so I was like, let me get back into like comic books. You know, I used to love those as a kid and learned all about that and stuff. And then now like this past week, I'm like, let me get into wrestling. <laughs> so I just like <laughs> been like studying like what's going on, you know, and, and whatever, and whatever leagues and watching uh dark side of the ring. And that's been fun. So yeah, that's what, what, I, what I've been up to lately, but yeah, it, it helps me curious and, and, and finding that, that nostalgia is, uh, you know, um, just, just really, I don't know, 
self-beneficial. It makes me feel better, you know, revisiting those things that made you happy when you're younger. Yeah, totally. I think that there's a lot of that in our generation, particularly the like 90s, the 80s, 90s kids. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that is or why, because I don't feel like anybody that I know that's older has that sense of nostalgia. And I'm curious if anybody that's like younger than us is also going to have that. Yeah, I, I think I think so. I mean, some reason I think it's a big thing where it, it, across all generations. I mean, excuse me. Um, we, we you know we've we've had there's those like meme pages. You know, like I think it's like Garden Old Days. You know, where it's like old people nostalgia. You know, it's like remember when uh, playing was fun. You know, and it shows a picture of like an asphalt street with like broken glass all over it. You know, remember when we used to play outside? You know, uh -huh. it's just like, yeah, uh, you know, so I'm sure, you know, every generation is definitely nostalgic. I, you know, I would say maybe it started more with um, maybe Gen, you know, Gen X stuff, you know, with uh, the definitely the, the 80s babies for sure. And they moved on to us because we're so close to that in, in our like late what millennial yeah <laughs> you know, yeah i guess uh, i'm period. thinking like from like a sense of like pop culture yeah type I, that's, nostalgia. it's definitely had because you know we've, we've we've seen these cycles come back where it's like you know all of a sudden 80s stuff is cool again you know and and, and right now 90s is having its glow up and maybe it's it's on this tail end because now we're seeing the the new metal resurgence that's like a 2000s thing yeah so it's like you know that it's all coming back for a full circle and we kind of know where it might you know keep going <laughs> i know oh, yeah. i'm not sure what was so culturally relevant after new metal you know oh, like we're, we're gonna get into the um the asking alexandria attack attack myspace type stuff i think i think so i think that's never gone away though it's still there but it's like i think we're gonna see even more of a mesh of stuff i think the next thing we're gonna see is like like trap hardcore or like you know trap doom you know it's like, doom. yeah like <laughs> like like stuff with like 808s but like heavy slow riffs you know like i think it's gonna get there man i think we're gonna see that soon if not already it maybe it exists and i don't know about it but i'm like i'm pretty sure that's where it's gonna head that's like like i just want to see stuff that doesn't exist yet and and you know that's like if we see this new metal resurgence happening we're gonna see like it get heavier and more rap too so i think that's gonna exists is like a, a doom trap thing you know <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what you can do with yeah your... I'll, I'll do it i don't care man. i mean everyone's gonna hate it you know and be like this is not true this is not real metal this is not real hip-hop and you shouldn't be rapping you i'm like i'm a hispanic guy i can get away with it maybe. i don't know like um you know like i don't know man like i i think i think it's gonna happen man i think it's just a matter of time yeah totally i, I think that's why i see things yeah you know I, <laughs> I find myself like continuously fascinated as I get older, um, hearing new music mm -hmm. like that the that the young kids are listening to. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I don't get this, <laughs> but like that's actually kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Like I'm glad that I don't understand this. Sure. I get kind of like, I don't want to say like bummed out, but like with like the new metal thing, mm -hmm. like there you know, there's a lot of bands that are doing a lot of cool stuff, and I'm like, yeah, but like I get it. Like, I'm glad that they're doing it and I'm glad they're having fun, but I get it. And I feel the same way about like a lot of like, there's a, like the new like modern, uh, like traditional death metal stuff that's coming out and all that stuff. Like, yeah, this is tight. Yeah, this is yeah. cool. Like I listened to skinless in high school. Sure. I don't know if I need to listen to like another band that sounds like this, <laughs> but that's just me. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I, I'm always looking for something new, but when I do hear stuff that's new, I'm like, I don't like it. But when I hear stuff that sounds like the stuff I like, it's like, well, there's already bands that I like that sound like this. Sure. So sure. I'm like stuck in this weird place. Like, what the fuck do I want? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, I, I think that's how I am with, with like, you know, hardcore stuff or, or even like, you know, metalcore stuff, you know, which, which is, you know, most people don't like nowadays. But it's like, I, I once again, going down nostalgia, I was like, man, I used to listen to this band, this band. So let me listen to like their whole dis discography or whatever. I've been listening to bands discographies re recently just for the hell of it. And, and like bands I used to listen to, but like haven't listened to their albums in like the last eight or 10 albums, you know? Sure. <laughs> so I just like been going through them from like from the beginning to like my days. I remember them and then past that for like six albums or seven albums, you know? And it's been interesting. It's like, yeah, that was a good period. <laughs> I'm glad I stopped that, you know? <laughs> and, and, uh, but you know, uh, you know, once again, you know, like you said, with the the new metals and uh, resurgence, like I, I do want to give a shout out to my one online buddy, uh, Gone Mage. You, you know, he was really inspired by um like Spine Shank and like cool. you know those bands like that. You know, so that that was a, that was a fun release. I always uh, support that guy as much as I can. But yeah, with like your experience in the 
underground. I found, Mm -hmm. I find it to be um, really intriguing and it seems exhausting to some degree from an outsider's perspective. Mm -hmm. Like I've had such a hard time keeping up with like the pulse of the underground, Mm -hmm. which seems like completely ridiculous because it's a lot easier now, I would imagine, to understand what's going on than like what it was when I was in high school. Yeah. Where it was just like, you know, like the C D back. You yeah, I'm just looking notes. at labels. Yes. You know, and yeah. like or who what bands people were thinking. Yeah. And that's how you find out about bands. Yeah, you had to find out about bands through buying their CDs, looking through the thank you notes, you know, or um, you know, or cassettes or whatever, or, or seeing like the their pictures and seeing what t-shirts they're wearing and then like what and then you know the internet's like kind of a thing so it's like you're like where's where's their myspace you know where's uh, you know yeah. where's, oh they don't have one like like how the hell do i get my hands on that how do i hear that like what is that like yeah. when you see a symbol you know like what does that mean like it took me like i think a couple of weeks when i initially saw like the trouble logo of the band i'm like the the t the i'm like what what is this like what does this mean like who's who is this yeah but yeah it, it is pretty exhausting man like you know i i just try to keep keep my thumb on stuff you know on the underground and there's just so much out there now you know more than ever i feel like because you know anyone can can make stuff and upload things and on on band kept now everything's so much more accessible which is good and bad i guess you know i don't know totally it's like the i've i've talked about this countless times but it's like the the access to technology and distribution is definitely a blessing and a curse mm-hmm. for sure yeah um, and the one thing that really bums me out in the realm of metal is that it's almost sometimes hard to even trust the stuff that I'm listening to. I'm like, is this actually a real band <laughs> or is this like one guy that's really good at Pro Tools? Yeah. yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and like there, there's validation in all of that. Mm-hmm. But like, I still like, I just want to hear like some people in a room ripping it. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. want to like listen to an album, like a metal album. Mm-hmm. And like feel like, oh, like I'm actually just listening to like basically like a hard electronic record. Ah. You know, like when you get into like more of like like the tech death side of things, sure, and sure. it's like it sounds cool, but it's like, is this real? Does it need to be real? Yeah. Where am I at? Because like, I'm like, because <laughs> again, I'm like complaining. It's like I don't want to listen to stuff that sounds like skinless anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't want to listen to all the bands that are doing like like dying fetus tribute stuff, sure, you sure. know. But like I also don't want to listen to like fake computer quantized metal mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like what what do i even like metal anymore <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know i do these, these are all fine like, existential questions i'm like so stuck <laughs> with like the records that i like it's like mm-hmm. or is that just the point have i reached that threshold where it's like now i'm the guy that has the interests that have stopped dude i i i have felt that <laughs> so much um like when I was a bit in a band, like, you know, music's been like my whole entire interest in life, like that my, my main focus, like my whole entire life. And then, you know, uh, when you're in a band with your best friends, you know, and then it's like things don't work out and it's like, well, like what now, you know? And it's like, I became really jaded where I'd like stopped, you know, listening to music at all, you know, especially when we're, you know, working at, at Get Hip Recordings, like, you know, we're surrounded by music, you know, just every genre and, and you know, it's just at a point you're just like, I'm tired of everything. Like, I don't don't want to listen to anything. And then like now, you know, I went from one record label to another. Now I work for 20 bucks spin, you know, death metal, one of the best metal, extreme, it's not even death metal, it's just extreme metal, just everything, you know, doom, death, black metal. It's just what, you know, whatever my boss wants to sign. And it's like, you know, at at first I, I think for a while, I was like, maybe I should take a break from death metal too. Maybe I'm getting tired of this, but you know, now it's like, that love is finally coming back where it's like, I think I took a long enough break, you know, where it's like, yeah, I care about this stuff again. <laughs> you know, now I'm buying instruments, you know, and, and, totally. and things like that. I, I think everyone goes th- th- through, you know, their, their, their circles or phases, man. You know, it's like whatever fits your life. And, and same thing as you're saying, you know, maybe I don't like this or that anymore. It's like, maybe you don't, but like, maybe you will later on. And, and it's like, maybe you don't like skinless. Maybe someone is like their first attempt and they don't even know about skinless and they're yeah, this new band like totally you know, they don't know about skinless you know it's like yeah you don't you know it's just it's, it's an interesting thing it's like it's hard for me to believe that like some bands have never heard a band like that it's like the the Greta Van Fleet Led Zeppelin thing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know it's like there's no fucking way that this band has never listened to <laughs> Led Zeppelin yeah, yeah you know yeah, but like yeah. okay whatever sure you know mm-hmm. 
Good PR. Yeah, yeah it's great PR. <laughs> just makes a lot of people mad. Yeah. And that, just gets their name thrown out there more. Man, it, you know, stuff like that gets me like frustrated. It's like you make it makes me wonder how much like their record label or their manager is paying like Rolling Stone to call them like the next generation of rock. You know, the return of rock and roll is back. And it's like no one gives a shit about Greta Van Fleet, dude. Like no one cares. I mean, I saw them when they Did opened you? for Metallica. Oh, right. I, I missed. Yeah, I didn't go in for then. <laughs> <laughs> I went in later. <laughs> They're a really good live band. I'm I'll sure. tell you this. I, they play a lot, so I'm they're sure they're very talented. I'm sure they're technically proficient. They put on a damn show. I'm sure they do. So good for them, but I, I don't, I don't want to like listen to it. No, you know, <laughs> like you can be like the, I don't know, man. You can be the fucking like Wiggles. You know what I mean? You perform and play exactly <laughs> perfect. You know, uh -huh. but it's like not for me, man. You know, I, you know, it's just one of those things. But yeah. so uh, going back to just get hip real quick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of the things that. Uh, really fucked me up working there was again you know you're surrounded by music all the time music of all genres yeah. of all decades yep yep but the thing that like was so morale killing for me about being there was seeing like all the piles of dead stock <laughs> albums of these bands that just tried their hardest and fucking flopped yeah dude. just stacks of bad albums terrible album covers shitty music and it's mm -hmm. just like i mean that's inevitable but seeing so much of it like jesus christ like yeah. this this these this band put their all into this fucking cd and now there's just 50 of them <laughs> that have been sitting here for 10 years collecting dust and yeah. nobody cares about it for it's sure like is that me <laughs> or like um you know like like the like the catatonic youth page on instagram right um yes. anytime i see like 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 a bad metal video on there i'm like is yeah. that like how people view what I do? <laughs> is that what this is going to be like? Am I one of these? That's that's a scary <laughs> question. You know, that's that is a fear inducing question. That is like you know because like you never like you never you never like, know you man. never know if you're being cringe without hindsight. I, you know, I I, <laughs> I agree, but it's like God. I, I think everyone needs to stop being so scared of being cringe. You know, maybe, every, sure. maybe everything is cringe, you know, it's just totally, like, you know, and we all need to get over it, but like, yeah, it's cringe. All right. Well, whatever. This is what I'm doing right now. So it's like, you know, maybe it won't be cringe like 30 years from now when it resurges like new metal, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, you know, it's just, I don't know, man. I think there, there is, I, I, I'm definitely like that too, where it's like, I constantly question myself, like what I'm doing and like, you know, I, I just, I'm just all about doing stupid shit. So it's like, why not, man? It yeah. fits my personality. So if I if I want to put out like a fucking polka album, I'm going to do it. Like, I don't give a shit, you know? But it's like, yeah, is that cringe? Probably. I don't care, man. Like, whatever. But yeah, I, but it's like one of those things you got to get over. I don't know, man. But you're right. It's like people judge you. <laughs> so it's like, For sure. yeah, yeah. And like, it, it, it also just makes you feel like really small and mm -hmm. like puts things in the perspective. Because it's like, my, my world is music mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. And I put so much into everything that I do. But I know for a fact that I also probably have a stack of records still sitting at Get Hip that nobody fucking gives a shit about sure. along with everybody else. Sure. And yeah. all of these is like this this museum of failed dreams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, fuck, that's heavy. Yeah. But, but that's not like the, the right way to look at things. No. I mean, it's... It, but but it just... Like, the, the right, I think the right way to look at things is like, well, you have a fucking physical product like you did it. You yeah. Know? Like that's totally. a lot of work to do that. Like no matter like the, if you have like the worst album cover and like the worst PR, it's still a fucking physical product that's in a store. Like, God damn, that's so much more than a lot of other people, you know? Yeah. Some people don't even get to that point, you know, like, and, and, and that's another argument too. It's like, do you even have to at this point? Like, is you just stick to digital on Bandcamp? You know, like it's like some people just stick to that and don't have physical product. Some some people attach their digital download codes to like a t-shirt or like a sticker. Like, you know, you buy a sticker, you get all the album. You know, it's just, it's just kind of like the, the new model, I guess. You know, you don't have to have a physical object anymore, but it's like, there's so many of us that appreciate that. And so many, I think musical collectors and comic book collectors, you know, uh, in particular are like, all about the physical medium and you know they want the physical object and i guess video game people too i mean that's kind of a dying though too where it's like that digital is taking over and then and then physical but they're going through that now but yeah i don't know man it's a it's a big achievement to have stuff even if it's going to be dead stock you know it's like if that's your goal man you know just keep doing it i mean that it's, it's all about what makes you happy i guess at the end of the day like even if everyone's like pointing and laughing at you it's like well you know this is what i want to do so like whatever man 
Yeah. I, I guess you had to maybe have thick skin or something, man, or just not care about what people think. But it's hard not to, you know, if everyone's pointing the finger and laughing at you, you know, it, it, it sucks when they're, when they're laughing at you and not with you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and what, can, what can you do? <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, that, if that's just who you are, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's funny. It like, makes me think about, you know, like the, like the Catatonic Youths page mm-hmm. where it's mm-hmm. like, I love watching the stuff on that page, oh, yeah. and it's, it's some of it is so fucking good, it's like gospel rock, and yeah, stuff too, and you like know, you know, new metal, and, and like, but there's always this part of me too that's like, are we being bullies or is this funny? <laughs> it's like a, there's like a fine line sometimes because there is some stuff that is like objectively bad, yeah. but like according to who, mm-hmm. who the fuck am I to make that call? I don't know. Sure, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like I feel like. Everybody should have the right to like create art, but there is some stuff that is like objectively just really funny. But sure. again, I still feel like a bully sometimes I, laughing at it. I had this one meme page called check out this motherfucker <laughs> and it, it got like taken down off of Facebook uh, because for, for bullying <laughs> and and it was it was just like I didn't say anything about anybody. But it's just like a picture of a person. And, and, check out this motherfucker. And, and yeah, in like 3D font, I would put like check out this motherfucker on it, you know? <laughs> and, and that was a whole that was the whole thing. It's just like, you know, people are like, wow. And then I think it got too big where it's like it got shared around too much where the person in the picture would see it pop up on their Facebook, and be like, that's fucking me. And then yeah. like they report it, you know, and that happened too many times. So it got taken down for bullying. But uh that was a, a fun page. But yeah, I, I you know, I, I guess sometimes things we, we we say and do, you know, maybe we don't mean to be, but maybe it is bullying. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I guess how much of it is like human nature too, mm-hmm. to just like just critique judge or judge. critique. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is human nature for sure, you know, especially nowadays with like the internet, you know, everyone is a critic, you know. It's, I don't know. That's how it is, man. That's just human nature. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess I, I think you're right on totally. that. Totally. For sure. And I feel like it, I guess this also leans into what we were talking about a bit before with this modern wave of bands mm-hmm. and like you see a lot of things being repeated. I mean, that's nothing new, but I'm curious if like how much of this like emulation is genuine or how much of it is people that are like Riding playing it safe. Sure, sure. You know, like I want pop there now, so I'm yeah, gonna do this. Now. I want to be like in a successful band of a particular genre. We'll say metal. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna stick to like what works, so mm-hmm. we don't get called out. We just want to fit in. Sure. I don't know. It's weird. I mean, but, that's definitely a personal decision to make. Absolutely, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens for sure. Yeah. You know? I think. Um, I think right now death metal is seeing a huge glow up. So I think everyone wants to make a death metal band now. You know, um, I, I think now we have that new metal resurgence. You know, I think there's a good bit of people that want to make and do that now, too. I, I think, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, if someone who wants to either A, make that genuinely and it happens to sound like that. Or like you said, you know, B, you know, ride the wave of what's popular now. Yeah, and that happens for sure. Yeah, it, it's just, it's interesting how this band is changing the game. And then I listen to it and it's like. It doesn't sound new to me, <laughs> uh-huh. but you know, so it's like, who are these people that are writing these articles? Is yeah. it like, is it all just people that are way younger? younger? Than us? Yeah, for I sure. guess. Yeah, and yeah. like, okay, well that makes sense. God, I, I, I was, that gave me a fucking flashback. It was some bands and I can't remember that what the review said, but it was, it was like, this is sounds like the velvet underground meets like metal or whatever i'm like this sounds nothing like that dude like like maybe they had one part where it had this like clean like guitar picky part which maybe sounded like almost one part of one song of a velvet underground for like two seconds but then like none of the rest of the album does like and but they the band chose that to highlight it as like the review or whatever and it's like come on man yeah that definitely happens <laughs> and, yeah. and I, I once again I, I agree it is people that are younger that are doing these things you know for sure that are it, reviewing it's in, yeah, it's just interesting seeing all of this stuff happen as I just naturally age like a normal human being that I am, not a robot. Um, <laughs> no proof. It, yeah. You can't prove it. <laughs> <laughs> just cut off my arm. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just, I think it's just I'm aging. And, you know, that 
the new you've been exposed I'm, to so much I, i'm like <laughs> like you know just like like i am like you know decades removed now i mean i'm in my late 30s at this point mm-hmm. and like yeah like the people that are like the tastemakers of underground culture should be the people that are in their late teens, early twenties. Like that's like how it stays relevant, but it's like really hard for me now to like listen to a new band of like 20 somethings and give a fuck. And like, I don't even care how good they are. It's just like they're <laughs> kids and I don't care. It's so weird. I don't want to be like this, but I am. It makes it really hard for me to like, I, I've been, I've, I've kept that, that mind open. I haven't closed it off just because they're younger, <laughs> you know, even though, yeah, it does get frustrating. Cause like, you know, I, well, what I, the fuck do you know? I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but that's not, for sure. I can't be like that, but right. I catch myself being like that. <laughs> I, you know, and, and I agree. It's it's fine because as we get older, we're just we've had time to be exposed to so much, you know, and it's like, uh, and, and, but you figure like these young kids, like this new generation, should be exposed to that too, but they're Absolutely. not, you know, but they're not like like it's they were like, we, it, the internet came about like during our lifetime, you know, like where we had AOL and things like that, where, you know, you had to do searches and research and like, but now everyone has like everything at the fingertips and they still don't look up stuff. Yeah. You know? I remember, this is actually a funny story. Um, there's a band from Pittsburgh that kind of leans into the somewhat new metal thing. They're popular. I'm not going to say their name. Um, but we played a show with them, Gray Walker, mm-hmm. years ago, like before, this was like before they got like signed and shit like that, but um, they were still doing the same kind of shit. But I remember playing a show, we played a show with them, maybe a couple shows with them, honestly. And like through the grapevine, like we had like heard that like he said, she said type shit. Mm. Anyways, somebody from that band had Uh-oh. referred to us as being dad metal. <laughs> Which I thought was really funny. Uh-huh. It's like, motherfucker, you guys are trying to sound like corn and they're way older than anything that what Grey Walker's trying to sound like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but like, it's like there's that removal. It's like, do they just really not know uh-huh. that they're emulating a sound that's like 15 years younger than anything we're doing? Sure. I mean, like, but yeah. I get it. <laughs> I mean, like, we're older. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like we are older guys. We don't we don't dress cool, you know. <laughs> That's debatable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, the last time I saw you guys play um, was here in Penn Brewery, which is love this place. Uh, and uh, you were wearing a cool ass Vogue shirt. That was so sick. I told <laughs> I told Adam. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think what what bands he's in. He's in so many bands now. But I was like, Adam, I'm like, dude, that's a sick shirt. He's like, hell yeah. He's like, <laughs> I'm like, I want that fucking Vogue shirt like ASAP. I'm like, yeah, man, that's sick. <laughs> So yeah, you guys dress cool, man. Okay, well, I'm glad I could be the, uh, <laughs> the trend cover, cover up for everybody else in the band. <laughs> Love you guys. Yeah, just dude. kidding. <laughs> but you know what I mean? We're just like sure, man. dudes just doing, you know, I don't know, like, you know, <laughs> metalcore, melodic death dude, like, type well, stuff. Once again, I've been like so nostalgic. Dollar Tree Darkest Hour. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, you guys remind me like Darkest Hour for sure. That's a fun Dollar Tree Darkest Hour. <laughs> um, yeah, like I, I've been like this nostalgic, you know, like I said or so many times already, but like um, I, I was, I've been listening to like Soundgarden and Stone Temple Pilots and like, ah, I'm trying to think who else. Uh, but yeah, it's just like, you know, when people used to sing like, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's just like, God. And it's so fun to like, go back to, to like where I was and, and, and just like revisit this music that I haven't listened to in decades, you know, and be like, you know, you can hear some of these songs on the radio still to this goddamn day, but it's like, yeah, what, what makes this song a hit? And like just viewing it from like a totally different lens or perspective now. And man, there's some goddamn bangers like it, for Stone Temple Pilots and Soundgarden and like Alice in Chains. It's been like so long since I heard those bands and it's like, it's been so fun. I'm like, oh man, I got I to gotta hit some of these up during karaoke or something sometime, uh-huh. man. But then it's, then, then I also made like a, a me- the reason I brought that up is because like I made a, a meme joke on, on like Instagram. It's like, yeah, I'm going to be, um, you know, find me in the back of the bar uh, asking, uh, people if they want to start a, a dad rock band you know and we got to wear like affliction shirts and uh <laughs> those shitty jeans with the stitching on the butt you uh-huh. know like yeah, yeah. you know like let's uh-huh. totally play the dad card you know the the yenzer bar bands you know yeah. yenzer dad bar band type you know group uh-huh like i think that'd be so fun <laughs> you know and, but it's like you know that, is that cringe yeah for sure <laughs> but like i want to do it like <laughs> this would yeah. be so fun just you know sing uh those those covers of like those early 90s songs but 
who knows? Maybe I'll hit that, that resurgent cycle and we'll uh, be a hit cover band. <laughs> I think that like in like a certain demographic, I think that that is already happening again. Oh, yeah. But we're just removed from it. For sure. You know, I feel like we could probably go out to Jurgles for a couple oh nights and maybe see like yeah. the local bands that are doing that, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they have to exist. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if like, like my, one of my old bands, like his dad uh, was one of those Pittsburgh bar bands. And we seen them play cover songs and just go and drink with his dad and like their buddies and stuff. And, and that was such a good time. And, and uh, but they, you know, they would play all those, those nineties hits and stuff. And, or even like, 80s and 70s hits too like just for the old the older folks pretty much who are in the bar the youngers that are there you know they know the songs they want to sing along to and yeah and, you know my, my buddy's dad's like jumping on tables and singing you know <laughs> like he's rocking out you know uh-huh. and yeah and guaranteed those bands are still playing doing those songs and here i am being like i want to do that <laughs> you know and like they're already doing it or it is or it is already happening like you said you know who knows i, I would love to see those local jurgles bands for sure <laughs> yeah it's so funny to me and I, i've brought this up a few times but but I'm curious to have this conversation with you mm-hmm. in terms of like a band starting out, right? Mm-hmm. The the DIY grind that happens across any genre of music. Okay. But what do you think the DIY grind is like for a band that wants to be like a Nickelback, mm, yeah. like a stadium rock type band? Right. Because it's not like they can do the like, the Roboto preserving right. underground type, you know, like it's, it's where like metal harder, and man. punk works. It's got to be harder for sure. Yeah. You know? It's like, who do you, who do you play with, you know? And, and, and where do you go? Uh, I was thinking the same thing too. Cause like when I wanted to make like those, I'm like, what if I just want to make a band that sounded like Stone Temple Pilots? Like who do we play with? Yeah. Like where would we go? <laughs> yeah. Would we have to like open up for the cover band? You know, like, you know, uh, what do you do? I agree, man. Like it, it like, I don't know how you said, like you said, like whatever genre, but it really depends on what genre you do, what you make, because every audience has its own decisions and like its own like little things that they, they, you have to keep in mind, you know, that you got to follow to have a following. Yeah. So it's like, that, that matters for sure. But if you're going to make that kind of music, it's like, yeah, dude, I don't know. If you want to just sing ballads or whatever, if you want to be, I guess it's, it's probably easier to be a, be a singer songwriter than it is to make like another Alice in Chains or like some type of pilot band. Like, sure. Or, or a Nickelback, like, you know, especially a Nickelback. Like, yeah. yeah Cause I feel like when you have something that is supposed to be like this stadium slash dad rock mm-hmm. type thing, it's built. Part of that is like the, the excessiveness of like the, the loud guitar, the big stage, mm-hmm. the stupid hair, yeah. you know, like all that stuff. Right. And it's like you all, you, a lot of that too is like a big crowd, like the big screaming crowd is a part of that demographic. Whereas there's like in like some of like the DIY death metal or punk world, you could be like, yeah, I went to the show, 15 people were there. It was sick. Yeah, for sure. You know, Everyone and like went off. Yeah. And that, <laughs> yeah. that can't work for that other. So what do they do? How do you even make that work? No, man. I, you know, so I feel like it is a lot of that, like, yeah, we got to like, get in with the club and like pay for the stage time and then try to get people to come out to make it this big thing. Cause it needs to be big. Cause that's what the culture of this is. I think those bands that, that make it that sound like Nickelback, whatever they're just studio plants. I, you know, that's, that's my opinion. I sure. think, I think they're just like made from the studio label or whatever, like that are in-house band, you know, like we're going to make this and we need you and you and you, and we're going to put money into you and you got to make this and this, and we have a writer and uh, you know, this and that, and that's how it's done, you know, or else you wouldn't have a promotion. There's no way like you can find another nickel back on the street and want to promote that. It's like, you know, <laughs> well, Nickelback was a roadrunner band. They were. Yeah. So I was saying, yeah, cause they were signed too by God. Someone I read recently, I forgot the dude's history, man. He was in some band and he signed like so many famous bands. Uh, I think he signed Slipknot and Nickelback to, to Roadrunner back in the day. Yeah. I forgot his name, but yeah. Yeah, man. That, that's <laughs> even <laughs> that's dude, a hard road. The DIY grind of Slipknot yeah. is crazy to me. Yeah. I, I mean, I think you have a better chance of, of being noticed if you're a Slipknot or even like a, you know, a Dio or if you want to sing, you know, that's still, you're yeah. still playing heavy metal. You still have a better chance than like a Nickelback, yeah, a ballad, a ballad band. I, 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 I've been curious too, if like, will we see a, a, a resurgence of like, will there be like glam rock bands, you know, those 80 hair metal bands, would that make a resurgence, man? I don't know, man. I don't know if that kind of stuff can exist. Um, in a um in a time frame where 
people aren't allowed to be like misogynist. Maybe. Yeah. I you know what so. I mean? Like, I, I don't, can you, call. can you have like, um, culturally sensitive hair metal interesting does that's, that work that's that's a good question I, you know i guess you, you probably could but that is so ingrained into it you're right it's just very like sexualized and that's and, part of why so many people like it too sure. yeah it, it's, it's like it's very the reason i brought that up because like what i see in my like circle is there's a lot of younger people and people our age too who really like that that 80s hair metal stuff I, it's been seen a lot more of it like on my Instagram feed than, than in the last five, 10 years, man. So I'm like, will we see another like kind of eighties glam metal like type band? I, I don't know. I could see that happening. I didn't think the last, the closest thing we had was maybe the darkness, you know, <laughs> like sure. Maybe yeah. that doesn't really or count. Or Steel Panther. Like, yeah, exactly. There you go. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's more appropriate for sure. But that's like a meme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they're, sure, they're sure. a meme band. Yeah. You know, they, they, everything they do is like, they're characters mm -hmm. of like, God, I would, like I love Sunset that. Strip. I would know? love to be a character in a band though. I, I I don't care what anyone says, man. I would love to be a character in a band. I, I, I told you this like a million times, but like, I, I would love to make a band like dedicated to Pittsburgh where it's like, I wanted to call it that the East Coast Pop Art Experimental Band and like <laughs> everyone dresses like. Andy Warhol, you know, like like uh -huh. the turtlenecks, the the black pants, the boots, and like maybe Andy Warhol masks or something like that. And like, I want the whole band to be like anonymous, you know, and then put out like multiple albums, like all at once, like different genres, just like, you know, just all at once. And then people are like, what is this? You know? Yeah. And then who is, who's in the band? Like, I don't know, man. It's, but they made like this death metal band, this, this metal album, this like, you know, this like Mets, you know, Nirvana type album. You yeah. Know? Like, I don't know. I, I just want to do like so much different stuff, but like. I already, I guess I blew it. You know, you can't be anonymous anymore with that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love to be a character, a character in a band. I don't know, that'd be so fun to dress up and do that. And then I was like trying to think of like, I always try to think of so so far ahead of like my plans for this, 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 you know, hypothetical albums and, and this hypothetical career or whatever, you know, like dreaming. I was like, oh, it'd be so cool to have like, like remember like Kiss, they had like the unmasked tour or whatever, yeah. you know, and they played without their makeup. What if you had like an unmasked show, like finally after playing for like five, 10 years, 15 years, whatever, just you always wear the stupid Andy Warhol mask. And then finally, like it's the unmasking time and you take off the mask and it's just like, like, muscle makeup you know it looks like you're like <laughs> the muscles on your face and just like eyeballs like uh -huh. you don't have a face you know it's just like you take it off like, like they live yeah exactly it's yeah. like, like oh my god you know that's so crazy like i don't know that'd be fun i know it'd be a fun reveal and then you just play like the rest of the tour just looking like that <laughs> you know totally yeah i don't know I, I love fun ideas like that but then like i always have these like hyper imaginative like uh, concept albums and things where it's like, yeah, like say you do, you do those like six albums and like the physical packaging though, like maybe they fit together like a cube or something or like they, they, re they maybe like reveal a map and it leads somewhere to like the secret seventh album that's like buried somewhere. Oh, yeah. So you have like all the fans like be like, oh, I got to find this. Like, uh -huh. They go on their road trip or whatever and follow like where the clues lead to this, the hidden seventh album. There's like one of them, you know, like that Wu-Tang album, there's just one yeah. of them. <laughs> You know, I, I don't know. I always have fun ideas like that, but it's like no one to do them with. <laughs> so they just live in my head for like decades and I go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, with like all of the like, you know, the, the creative and like ideas that kind of fester inside your brain. Yeah. And also just being kind of like a fun guy, a goofy boy. Uh huh. Silly boy. You know, sure. uh, you know, you get to like start, uh, I guess I'm trying to find a, a smooth way to segue into like the meme culture <laughs> with you uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, because it is like a very interesting thing that is like a part of your life. Yeah. And I'm sure that it's one of those things that's like, you know, you've had like things that have been like probably way more air quote successful, mm -hmm. but you know, the idea of like success in a meme is probably that's maybe like an interesting question to start with. Sure. The idea of success in memes. <laughs> how does that work? <sighs> because it's like not it's not yours anymore once you put it out there, basically. Sure, right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And and I, you know, I've definitely seen my my you know photoshopped images, you know, stolen because I don't watermark anything. You know, I think I started water, watermarking stuff like when I first started like a decade ago. But um, yeah, I haven't done that in forever. So you know, I, I would see my stuff like repurposed or stolen, 
You know, I mean, if you can steal a meme, that's a whole entire other conversation. You yeah, know? that's what I was saying. Yeah. That's basically like, yeah, it's like not yours anymore. Right. That's like part of the culture. Sure. You know, and, and but like, you know, I, I'm still one of those guys where it's like if I si find someone else who made the stuff, like I'll share it instead of like post it myself. Or if I do post it myself, like it's po probably because like I found someone else's stuff that someone else posted as their own, but saw the watermark that doesn't match up with the page. And so I'll post that image instead of sharing it from that stolen page, you know, whatever. And then I'll like, you know, put at whatever the, this, the watermark is, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a way to give credit. And I, it's, I will always just give credit, man, instead of just stealing stuff. I don't know. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm like quite the opposite when it comes to like music though, too. Like I was going to say, like if I, with my, my experimental band or whatever, you know, I would probably release like everything digital for free. You know, I just feel like everyone needs to have access to whatever. Like, even if I like, like I love comics, if I made a comic, I think the digital version would be for free. You know, I just make sure anyone can, can have it if they don't have any, any money. I think entertainment should be for everyone, not just those with money well, or at least, uh, you know, pay your own price or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to do that that way too, as well. Um, but you know, when you have a physical object, yeah, of course it costs some money. But yeah, going back to the memes, man, it's it's I'm I'm known in so many different circles where it's like, yeah, oh, he's the he's the, he's the metal guy, he's the death metal guy or whatever. He wears your twenty bucks. He's the twenty bucks spin guy. Oh, he's he's the 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 comic guy. I know him from from comics. He's the comic. Guy. Oh, I know him from memes. He's a meme guy. You know, it's just it's just hard to juggle and these like yeah, these stupid I relate, things. dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, totally. You yeah, know? it's like oh, you're the guy with the podcast. Mm -hmm. You're in Gray Walker. You're that you're, Sykes. you're that rapper that yeah. I saw ten years ago. Right, I'm still doing it. Unfortunately, you're the Taylor yeah, Swift guy. I'm the Taylor Swift guy. Yeah, yeah. there's that too yeah. now. Yep, absolutely huge. Yeah, huge, so man. there's all that stuff. Yeah, but the thing that I think is interesting in terms of like memes versus music, mm -hmm. right? Um, with like people like taking things or giving things away. Mm -hmm. You know, like nobody is going to like if you put music out. I mean, like it would take a real psychopath to like take your songs and upload them it's directly theirs. onto their bow and camp and say it's theirs. Like right. nobody's going to do that. But with memes, people will do it. And for the most part, what's gross about it is just because it's not like they're trying to take your creativity, but they want your like social clout. Right. Right. So it makes it like, ugh, dude, I, I've seen that so much, especially with um slow, heavy metal music playing like that one in particular, like slow, heavy metal music playing. Uh, I've seen so much bootleg merch. I've seen, beers yeah name slow slow heavy metal music playing like i've seen ugh, so much shit dude I, I like even just like scrolling through a, a random big you know resharable page or whatever they just steal people's stuff i'll also be like seeing just seeing like who's this oh they made a funny joke let me see the other stuff then i'll see like my stuff i'm like that happens all the time and i I, I won't say anything you know i just won't comment or whatever and i won't report them it's like whatever man it just it, it's one of those things where it gets out of control it's like too big for you to control it anymore and it's yeah. just like and some people this one guy he made patches of it and then someone called him out it's like oh hey that's like this dude's page and he's like oh i didn't know it was like a thing already you know like i didn't realize that and so like he paid me like 300 bucks <laughs> i was like cool man like <laughs> thank you like you know you you i guess you have my permission to sell your patches you, you know <laughs> like that was awesome like yeah. you know you, i don't know it's, that rarely happens you know something like that but that's that was really nice <laughs> yeah so like you know with something like slow heavy metal music playing like that is a stupid idea mm -hmm. that went yeah like it was one of those what things. Ha like when what was the birth of that the birth of it was like just me looking for memes and I see this like Hey Arnold screenshot of the character Eugene. I think the episode is called Eugene Gone Bad. And he, Eugene's there wearing like a leather jacket with a pissed off face and just the audio subtitles on it had like music playing and it says slow heavy metal music playing. <laughs> and I was like, that's hilarious. <laughs> and like, and so I had like, I posted in the group chat and like of uh, all these other meme people, like, I'm trying to think who was in that 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 meme chat at the time. I've been through so many meme chats. They've they've evolved and people have left and came. Um, I think at that time it was like, um, I think Lettuce Dog might have been in there. R.I.P. Uh, teenage stepdad who's huge now. Um, I'm trying to think who else, but like everyone like laughed. They're like, oh, that's great. Uh, and then I just like started putting on everything. Just whatever funny images I found, I just like put it on there. Yeah. And then 
I was like, it was just one of those things where I was like, ah, I'm, fuck it, I'm just going to make a meme page and just do this now. And just I was, and then people were like, oh, can I make that with you? Like, yeah, sure. So I just invited whoever wanted to do it, just do it. And so it was like a good bit of us just posting that stuff. I mean, mostly it was just me, but um, uh, yeah, like Lettuce Dog, um, like they were like, a, she was a big, you know, meme sensation and and they're like she's like she's like who i know one of you has to be the person posting this like who is it like oh it's me he's like can i join your, your page like yes absolutely <laughs> like thank you that's awesome um and so uh yeah it, but it, it sucks because it, it breaks my heart each time i talk about it because like it got really big another big meme page i'm, I'm part of is called millions of dead posers yeah or just makes fun of music it's like you know the anti-music the, the whole joke is all music is bad and so it just makes fun of music and people who like music. Yeah. Um, that's the, the joke. Uh, and naturally, we're all big music fans. We all love music. But, you know, um, and it, it's probably the biggest page I'm part of now in, in terms of followers and things like that. But slow, heavy metal music playing got to the point where it was bigger than Millions of Dead Posers. And it started out, like, later than than that. And I was like, this is crazy. You know, and so I was, I was going to – I said I think I had, like, a third-party merch thing happening – where, you know, they take a more like 60% of your, your, you know, funds or whatever that people pay you. Uh, so it's like totally not really worth it or, or anything. Um, but people were still buying stuff steadily and it was enough to like, um, pay for like, you know, a Shopify or whatever, like have they have like a monthly fee and stuff. And, um, it was kind of like feeding itself. And, and then I was gonna like, I had plans to like make a record label and like all kinds of stuff, man. And I was like, so I was like this close to, to doing it. And then it got stolen just out of nowhere. I guess someone from the Philippines hacked into one of the other persons on the page access and through like back roads, like stole the page after of some other admin, it wasn't even my own, you know, like, mm. so, and then Facebook didn't do anything about it. And so it's like gone, <laughs> you know, like, like 300,000 likes on a page is like gone. It's like, man, that was so much work, you know, just to, to have that growth happen, to have to start over. And now it's like, I don't, I don't know what it's at, it's at now, but it's like nowhere near that. I mean, we can probably look it up, but <laughs> it's still doing okay, but it's like nowhere near as, as it was, man, yeah. that was huge. And I'm, I'm really sad too about like all the other memes and images that I, I posted that are just gone that I can't find again, that too. And then I'll see some of those resurface. I'm like, oh yeah, I made that one. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but you know, I mean, yeah. As terms of like, yeah, memes and and stuff, it, they're they're fun to make, and I just make them at my will. I don't feel pressured to to do them, you know, as much as I as I want. I'll go like months without posting, you know, on this stuff, and then post like ten in a row, like within like two days, you know. I don't know. Yeah, it just goes my phases. Um, another fun one I have is like Poo and Tim's. It's like a Winnie the Pooh <laughs> that wears Timberlands, and that's like a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> like some reason, I guess like. I think slow heavy music playing and like Pooh and Tim's got like monetized somehow on Facebook. And like, I didn't even like, I think I signed up for a long time ago, but I didn't notice like anything coming from it or whatever, or just never paid attention to my emails. And then I think it was like last week I saw like Facebook paid me like 50 bucks <laughs> for, okay. like, for like Pooh and Tim's memes. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> like, I don't even, and I was like, was that doing good? I looked at my page. I'm like, oh yeah, they do have like a couple thousand shares. Like I didn't even pay attention. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know. I'll just post stupid shit and then just not look and not look back at it again or the comments. Like sometimes, I, I think the worst thing about like the slow heavy metal music playing page is like people submissions because like, I don't know people are people and just you have so much an infinite type of, of what's going on in their life or brains. And so you have an infinite possibility of submissions, you know? <laughs> and so I'll be just in my inbox and it's just, dude, there's just like so many fucking animal corpses or like mutilated Ugh. animals, dude. And you're like so many mutil mutilated animals or people are like, I'm like, God, man, I, I don't want to see this shit, man. Yeah. Like, God, that's like the worst thing about the page is like going through submissions where I just, I just never check my inbox like ever anymore because like that was just happening too much, man. I was like, I don't want to see that shit, dude. So I don't know. That's like the worst thing about the page. I, I would say, you know, and what can you do about it? There? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's like one of those things where it's like, I think I've, I've said it before, like, please don't send this. And I think people stop for a bit, but then, it's also one of those things where it's like people might send you more because you said that, you know? Absolutely. So I just try not to look at my inbox ever. Yeah. That's, well, that's, that's memes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you can't have a, 
you can't have too much of a good thing. There's always going to be a, a party pooper or mm-hmm. somebody trying to fucking shit on the fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, 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 just, I just keep busy, man. Like I, I was um, another podcast I've been listening to is um, Big Riff Energy. That's like the dude from Spirit Adrift. Um, Nathan, I think Nathaniel, Nathan. Um, but uh, yeah, he's he's a good dude. But yeah, Spirit Adrift is, was was on Twenty Bucks Spin. I think they're on Nuclear Blast or Century Media now. I'm sorry, I don't remember. But um, new album out, so check out Spirit Adrift's new album. They're great. Uh, but the reason I brought that up, um, uh, just you know, he goes about like you know talking about just different stuff and, and music and, and things in general. And, and I just like really like identify with that dude. Just you know, I feel like we're almost the same person sometimes. You know, <laughs> but uh, you know, he, he goes back to the nostalgia stuff and and just listen to to old uh, old vinyl records. Um, and uh, fuck, I was trying to remember. Um, this one like album cover he had was like really cool. I think it was for uh, I think. Oh, at the, yeah, sorry. I was trying to think of why I even brought him up was because he was listening to, he was just talking about like during COVID, how like, you know, everyone just felt lost and he felt like, you know, frustrated and he's like, couldn't do anything. So he just, you know, went back just like making music, you know, and almost felt like it was like the last piece of music he's ever going to make, you know, because like everything's so uncertain. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and for me, like, I felt the same way. It's like, I just want to make music and do stuff but I had to work, man. <laughs> I, you know, I was like one of the few people that were still working during COVID. Yeah. And I was like, it was like 10, 12 hour days, you know, like constant, for some reason everyone's wanting to buy records, you know? Yeah. And so I was just working my ass off for years, man. Like, I think it was like, what, two years. It was like the big time, I guess. Um, and that continued though for like, I think, I think I've been there like three or four years or five years. Two times flying by, man, just because I've been working so much, man. That's all I do. But, um, but I was like, man, yeah, I wish I can, I can make music, man, but I, I gotta work. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta package records and, sure. and check emails and things, man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I, uh, what I, you're, you're quite busy during COVID as well, right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was still at Get Hip mm-hmm. and then, um, in the time that I wasn't there, I was just like not playing shows or anything. So I tried to get into live streaming and it was fun for a bit. Yeah. Um, but it's not me. Mm-hmm. That's not sure. Yeah. You know, it's just not what I like. It's, that, that was an interesting time. Uh, because I was also into like the comic book scene and, and I was like, I like made my own like comic, like YouTube channel. And then through there, I met like other people that were doing the same thing. And then from there I got like asked to be in like a bigger, like comic group collaboration channel. And then like, we hung out like every weekend or like multiple times a week, like online. And then like that got pretty big. And then we got asked to like have a table at like Baltimore Comic Con. Um, and then there we met like, uh, there, there's this thing called the Hero Initiative and it's for these comic book writers that are like artists and writers that are like out of work. And if they need like help with their bills, health bills, you know, um, it's more of like a donation thing where, you know, they'll, they'll help out people for many months or years at a time. And I think the main guy on the board was Mark Wade, you know, one of the you know biggest comic book writers, you know, for Kingdom Come and a bunch of other famous stories. But, um, he was like, we're like, Hey, can we interview you? He's like, yeah, sure. He's like, yeah, these guys are pretty cool. Like, and we started like making our rounds and started interviewing like so many people, like all these writers and, and artists that we like love for so long. And then from there, uh, we had a buddy, Chuck, who um, had this huge booth at like New York Comic Con. So then we like did a huge thing at New York, New York Comic Con. I got to hang out with Dave Mustaine. Oh, cool. he's, he's one of the people that got interviewed yeah. and he was promoting his wine. And so I got to like stand next to him and like talk to him. And he gave me like a glass of wine, that like his wine. And we was like all cheered and drank. Uh, it, was, it was just these weird things I never thought I'd be in. You know, it's like, like how am I here? Like what is, what, what happened? And then before I knew it, like then like COVID happened. And we put on like the biggest online like comic convention. It was like the first one, if not the second, maybe technically. Um, and it was like a huge success. And I think like eventually um, the main guys in charge of like, I think sold the rights and stuff to it. And I think they got a big payout and went to Disney World and I got left out. But uh. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know, man. You just never know where life's going to take you, man. And it's, it's so fun to dabble on things. And then like now um, and I'm, looking into wrestling stuff and I'm like 
tempted to hit up Wyatt and be like, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, tag team partner, bro. You know, like, I'll start hitting the gym. Uh huh. You know, yeah. Start uh, doing promos on people. Uh huh. Um, I don't know. That'd be, that'd be fun. You know, I, I think, uh, I don't know. I don't think my wife would like that too much. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's always afraid of someone snapping their neck or something. But like, yeah, yeah, totally. I'm always tempted to do that. Then, like, uh huh. Hey, it's be tag team buddies. Yeah, I think that'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's it's I don't know. The reason I bring all that random stuff up is just like, um, you know, just we have to find out what make, makes us happy, what we want to do. And just, it can be anything that hits us at any time, any point of motivation or inspiration. And when the time is right, just like, you know, it, like, I think at, you know, wrestling in general is like, I've been questioning that for like years. I'm like, should I get back to that? Should I like look at that? I'm like, nah, I don't, that's stupid. And like, I'm not going to do that. I'm like, who cares? And then like, out of nowhere, this past like two weeks, I'm like, Now's the time. I, 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 don't, I don't know why. What happened? I was like, I, I feel like it now. So I'm going to do it now. <laughs> yeah. It's just one of those things. But, you know, I, mean, I know I, it's just important to find it for us to find what makes us happy, I guess. And Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what's, what's your mindset with, with that, that randomness? I think that I agree. You know, I have always been somebody that's like juggling a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And it really boils down to me just being um creatively and personally selfish to some degree mm -hmm. but it's just like doing like what i want to do and like if i feel like working on this project today i will if i don't want to work on it i'm not going to force myself to work on it because i know that's only going to make it worse like forcing art or forcing creativity is never yeah, right. a productive thing um you know so and i feel like it's important too just to like have hobbies and things that you like, mm -hmm. you know, and to like engage with those as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, for me, it's like theme parks. That's what yeah. I really like theme parks and like, okay, like if I can, if I'm off on a Monday and I can drive three hours to ride some roller coasters, why not? Yeah. You know, for sure. My life, my rules. <laughs> yeah. Let's man. fucking go. Yeah. yeah you know, great. let's do it. You know? So I think that it's really important to, yeah, just do what, makes you happy mm -hmm. um not you know um, there but there's also like i mean you got to balance selfishness with the other people in your life yeah um you know you gotta but it's also like you know sometimes like people like you know our family or our partners or things like that it's like you know them being happy makes us happy and sometimes you need to sacrifice a little to make them happy to mm -hmm. make you happy it's all compromise and you got to do all sorts of stuff yeah to to make it all work but sometimes like you don't always have to compromise i mean sometimes you have to compromise with others but also sometimes you have to compromise with yourself because mm -hmm. you can't do it all right so you know it's it's not easy but it also doesn't have to be complicated yeah you know what i mean it's just like it's all about communication i guess you know yeah but man and yeah, it, I'm always having that constant battle with myself. It's like, am I being too selfish, you know, or am I am I giving too much, you know? Hmm. Uh, I, I think I'm I'm very easily uh, taken advantage of, you know. It's because I I normally don't care, <laughs> you know. It's like, oh hey, uh, you know, what if um, what if I, uh, you know, I get hip? He's like, oh, I clean that top shelf with uh, this like rinky dink ladder or whatever, you know. It's like, all right, yeah, sure, whatever, man. And then like you're out there and you're wobbling, almost <laughs> falling over like the edge into like uh -huh. concrete or asphalt down there, like in the garage downstairs. Uh -huh. I almost fell off that one ladder one time, <laughs> 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 but I was like, oh man, that could have been bad. But like, what am I doing? You know? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I I do want to bring up uh another nostalgia thing I'm into is Lego. I've been to, oh. to Lego a lot. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, I know it's random, but it's like, yeah, my, my wife especially is like really into Lego too out of nowhere. And like, that's just like our thing. It's just building these random sets and it's been fun. Like we got this, um, all the new Indiana Jones sets. So we like kind of combined them and stuff. And I think, um, I think tomorrow or a couple of days from now, uh, she gets like some kind of like big, large wellness benefit from work where they're supposed to like, it's almost like an incentive for you to just buy whatever you want at home. You, you can't use it for like bills. You have to use it for like your life benefit for whatever reason okay. that may be. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to spend, she's like, yeah, I'm going to spend like, I, get, I think it's like two grand on like Lego or something like that. It's something <laughs> ridiculous. It's like, yeah. holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, she's super into it. But, and then I saw recently too, the, um, the drummer for, I think Brat, 
is really into Lego. I'm like, I should hit, I should chat that guy up, see see what he's building. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, it's, it's fun stuff like that, man. I don't know, it's it's all about having fun, keeping us entertained. But uh, yeah, I you know to bring it back, I guess to the theme of the show, it's like, um, you know, the Pittsburgh music scene. I guess is what we came here for. You know, uh, what's well, it's how we know each other. That's how we know each other. But like you said that the future also of, of the Pittsburgh scene. Yeah. Like, do you, Where do you see the Pittsburgh scene going in the future? I'm curious about, I think the biggest question in terms of the future of the Pittsburgh music scene lies not in the talent, mm -hmm. but in the business end of things. And if venues can keep their shit together yeah. and if promoters can you know be patient enough or willing enough to like curate a scene again sure um because i think that like those are the types of things that a lot of people um overlook or underappreciate sometimes is like yeah like you can have a ton of good bands mm -hmm. but like the promoters are a lot of the glue i mean yeah because yeah. i mean sometimes bands are their own promoters but not always right um and then also you need places to play yeah. You need reliable places that are comfortable that people want to go to that people have fun at. Mm -hmm. The type of places that like people are like, I have nothing to do tonight. Let's go to fucking Sideshow Bob's <laughs> and like see because who you know somebody something cool is going on. Sure. Because you trust the venue and you trust the promoter to put on good bands. Yeah. Like that just doesn't exist. Right. Um I think it's just like lack of capital in general. Like I think ever since like COVID hit, it's like a lot of us stop like I was I was part of Still and Bone Productions, which is like it was it was a very big like death metal s type thing, like getting the best metal bands in general from the country to come to Pittsburgh, yeah, or, or the, even the world is sometimes different countries, and we put on like one great fest, and the second one was going to happen, and then COVID hit. Um, and there were some killer bands if you look up that lineup again, but uh, it happened. I mean, you know, then it's like, well, we gotta save our money because like, what's we don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> You know, and then um, the main the main two in, in charge um, is like Pyre Press. I think, you know, they make the best shirts in Pittsburgh. Their merch is just so detailed and incredible. Um, these I can't even describe that. They're like machines that they have in, in the in the office. It's just so technically advanced. <laughs> you know, these the screen printing process is incredible. Um, just like tiny pixelated color differences. It's, it's amazing. But, um, you know. I think, you know, they, they just kind of just focus more on on their own company, you know, than productions. And I, I know um, Lewis took over for a little bit doing shows. Yeah. Um, um, I'm not, I think he's, he might still be doing stuff as well. I'm not sure. Uh, I know AJ from Preserving Underground's rocking it. He's doing a lot of shows in different different genres now too yeah. out there. Um, so it's, it's a bit of a hike for me. I haven't been there yet, but, um, you know, I, I hear uh, people enjoy shows there, so. Yeah, I mean, I think things are in a good swing mm -hmm. for um, rock, metal, mm -hmm. punk. Yeah. Um, but if we're talking about like the music Everything scene else. as a whole, yeah, yeah, there's definitely some other genres mm -hmm. and pockets that I think could use a little bit more love yeah. than um, playing in in the gravel with one PA speaker <laughs> at a brewery or something like that. Sure, you know man. what I mean? Yeah. Like. But yeah, what's I mean, that's another conversation for another time. I what, suppose. what is the the hip hop promotion stuff looking like nowadays? I haven't haven't paid attention to that stuff in a long time. Um, I think the last time I was listening to like Pittsburgh hip hop and like specifically uh, was like the days of like S Money, <laughs> you know, um, uh, the government, mm -hmm. um, early Wiz Khalifa, uh, like Rostrum Records stuff, uh, ID Entertainment, yeah, uh, like those was like. I was really into that stuff, man. It was funny that someone posted like, um, I guess a video of Wiz Khalifa at, um, I think it was uh, Star Lake out there. Um, I was like, damn, man. Like the last time I saw him perform, like in person at a concert, he was like barely taller than me. <laughs> I, I, I don't think he even had an album. I think he had like an EP out. And uh, I knew him from like one song off of like an ID Labs mixtape volume two. And, sure, and it was like, ah, oh, man, I thought it was so good. And I think he put on a great show, man. And I was like, I talked to him like afterwards. You know, he came and hung out the bar. I think he was too young to drink too. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't get a drink, you know. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, that was great, man. I, I love that. I wanted to hear this one song you didn't play, you know, off the mixtape. And he's like, oh, thanks, man. You know, that's crazy. 
Uh, and then, you know, that was it. But like, man, see, but yeah, that's the last time I paid attention to, to the Pittsburgh hip hop scene, man. I mean, besides your stuff, of course, but. Yeah, I mean, I really don't know what's going on on a large scale. Mm -hmm. um, anything that I see happening in the local hip hop scene seems to be um, pretty DIY, like shows in skate shops or okay. shows in like um, clothing like art stores, galleries, yeah. clothing stores, like right. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, very like um, streetwear yeah. culture adjacent. Right. And like that's cool to some degree. Mm -hmm but I think it needs to be bigger. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, but a lot of places don't like to do hip hop shows mm -hmm. because there is a negative connotation of the crowd that it's going to generate. Yeah, there's like a, a weird fear for like no reason, I think. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, yeah. Negative connotation is probably the best way to put it. Yeah, I mean like, sure. Th I mean, I think things can happen at any anywhere, any type of event. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Totally, yeah, totally. But I mean, I think it's that type of thing where like if you tell somebody like you're having, uh, if you're a business and you tell your insurance company you're having like heavy metal shows or hip hop shows, they're probably going to raise your premium. Yeah. I mean, we saw that at Get Hip. Yeah. yeah. It's fucked. Yeah. Yeah. For and sure. then it makes things like a lot harder to do. Yeah. But again, like the, for in terms of the the future of the scene, I think the creativity is always going to be there. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious to see if there will ever be a time where people like on the, on, the, on the business end of things <laughs> uh -huh. are able to put a little bit more into like curating and um, letting people, um, I don't know, like just like finding like promoters or bookers to like curate specific shows with specific lineups and highlight some talent. Mm -hmm. Cause there is definitely like, a supply and demand, too many cooks in the kitchen. Sure. Everybody has the right to make art mm -hmm. and everybody deserves to be on a stage, mm -hmm. but not all at the same time. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think that there are some people where it's like most of these places now, like any of these venues, like anybody can book a show. Mm -hmm. You just email them, give them however many hundreds of dollars they want and mm -hmm. your show can happen. Sure. But that's no way for a scene to flourish. Right. That's just a way to get you and your the 40 people that know you to come out. It doesn't grow anything. Right. It just makes you look cool to your bubble. Sure. Yeah. I, there next definitely needs to be more, I guess, organization, you know, and collaboration. And it's just, I think it's maybe, maybe harder for a lot of, you know, different stuff besides metal and punk and rock. I, it's, I feel like it's, it's harder for well, hip, the, hip hop specifically. It's like, I know, who do you collaborate with? Who do you talk to? You know, it's like, who's the big promoters and how long have they been promoting? I feel like there's a lot of, like one-offs like people will be like oh i'm a promoter i'll do like one or two shows and then like that's it you never see me again and then it's like someone else you know for for hip-hop and I, I just feel like it's that that i've noticed from like flyers and posters and things like that yeah yeah it's i mean it's because it's a lot of fucking work mm -hmm. you know it's a uh it's a survival of the fittest yeah and a lot of people ain't very fit right <laughs> yeah yeah i i think it's god i hate to say it but it's like almost up to the performer at that point if you're in a scene and there's like no promoters and you as an artist doing things for so long, it's like you got to become the promoter yourself and make the scene yourself, which sucks. You well, know? that's, I mean, I think that's what you see yeah. a lot of. Uh -huh. That's what's happening now. Sure. I mean, across all genres, I'm sure. But, but yeah, yeah. What, I mean, what happens when that, when that happens is things get unintentionally segregated mm -hmm. and then you just have like clicks. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's yeah. like having like an outside promoter to be the person that's like, oh, I like you, you, and you mm -hmm. from these three different pockets. Let's do a show. Yeah. You know, but now it's just very much the, you know, the same half dozen artists sure. play with the same half dozen artists mm -hmm. at the same two venues <laughs> every other week. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. it's like there's some some people that I really, really like in the city and I see them post shows and I'm like, really this show again, mm -hmm. it's the same fucking lineup yeah. again. Yeah. But it's like people are like in their, their comfort zone. Yeah. They're, they're com clicks and comfort zones. It's like, how do yeah. How do you get out of that? And for me, it's like, I've always tried not to be in like certain clicks and things like that. I, 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 I guess just would like to be friends with everybody, <laughs> but it's at the same time, it's like that can also hurt you, you know, cause maybe certain people in certain clicks don't like that, you know, and then, you know, they, they banish you from 
access to that section of whatever it may be, you know? Sure. So I don't know, man. It's, it's a, it's a hard line. I think there's also to the discussion in terms of local musician mm -hmm. and how often you should actually play out locally. Sure. Yeah. I, um, I, I think it should be like once every three months or something yeah, like that. You I think know, that that's like, healthy. Yeah. Once a season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, if you're good. If, if you're playing just local, you know, I mean, yeah. it's fine if you go to West Virginia, Ohio, or yeah, whatever, totally. or different cities besides Pittsburgh, you know, yeah. there's plenty of other cities in Pennsylvania, you know. But. And I think too that that's another thing that is a lot different in terms of the type of music. Mm -hmm. That's another genre yeah. thing. Yeah. Because if you're like a singer songwriter mm -hmm. and you're just getting paid to like sing songs at like a winery or something. Sure. You could fucking gig That's every goddamn gig. night. Yeah. But if like, you're like a band band, mm -hmm. now, you know, if you're a, a dad band playing Pittsburgh bars every weekend. Yeah. You could do that. Mad bank, bro. Yeah. You could definitely do that. <laughs> you could definitely do that. And you have beers all night. Yeah. I'm saying, you know, it's a, but yeah, I think it's like, <laughs> I think that it, it, I understand that like, it's like in order to get good at playing live, you got to play live. Yeah. Yeah. And not everybody has the access to tour. Sure. Or the whether it's connections or mm -hmm. money or both. Yeah. Um but still like I think playing locally that much like is not a good thing for anybody. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I if think, uh, if you're like a band band mm -hmm. where you're like relying on like people to come out and see you, you're not playing, you're not getting you're not playing at a place where there's a dedicated base. Sure. Of people like at like a winery or, you know, the, the, the brewery. The, mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's they're the same fucking thing. All that being said, uh, <laughs> being in a band is a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's good to like step away from it too mm -hmm. and like do other things. I think there are ways to still be a part of, you don't, like, you don't need to, always like be engaging with something in order to be like a part like, of it, a part of it yeah. you know? Yeah. And like, whether you're like actively creating now, like that doesn't really matter mm -hmm. because you will make more music again mm -hmm. at some point. Right. You may end up in another band. You may sure. not. It doesn't really matter because again, it's like at the end of the day, you're over here smiling, yeah. having yeah. a good time, sure. <laughs> telling a lot of good stories. <laughs> Having, you know, like things are cool. Things are happening. Yeah, man. Yeah, it, it is a, a life. I have lived a life. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you. And um, I guess we'll do like a little outro thing where I'm going to be like, and that is all, folks. Thanks so much for listening. One more time. Jason can too. The Thanks, one man. and only. Maybe see me next time cutting promos in the ring, brother. <laughs> I'll be back again next week. Same time, same place, same channel. You know the drill. My name is Brian. Start the Beat is the podcast. Take care of yourselves. Take care of the people around you. Peace.